This is Restless. Welcome back to Restless. This is your post-mortem on the young, restless, and reformed. I am your host, Matt, joined, as always, by Pastor Michael Bowman. We are here, and we are diving back into our series on the virtues that we are to supplement our faith with as the Apostle Peter teaches us. Pastor Michael, what have people missed? If they're just joining us now, they should go back and listen to the other episodes. But what what have we, give them the overview of what we've done so far. Definitely go back. This is our attempt this year to not simply critique and to deconstruct and to tear down anything, but to act actually work toward building one another up. And so we have been working through Second Peter chapter one, especially as it uh, speaks of adding to our faith uh, various things, things like virtue and knowledge, which we have covered in the past. So if you want to go back and look at where we've talked about faith and where we've talked about what it looks like to supplement that faith with virtue, and what it looks like to add to that virtue knowledge. You can find those in previous podcasts. They should be titled, you know, something having to do with virtue, something having to do with knowledge. I don't remember our exact names. I I don't know. Do you have do you have the list? We should be saying it every time, right? So we had virtue, not vi- virtue signaling, knowledge, not know it all. And uh, today, can I just announce it? Can I just say what we're on to? Yeah, please do. Uh, so today we're on to self-control or um, as it is sometimes translated temperance and so today we're talking about temperance not treat yourself that's right we're we're saying the language of the king james and not the language of gen z so here we are um pastor michael will you read for us these verses that we continue to dive into from second peter Yes. Um, So starting back in verse three of chapter one, it says this, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promise so that through them, you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control. Great. So that is what we are discussing tonight. And yes, in, I believe in the King James, it is uh, temperance here. So this is, again, one of the classical virtues. As we've said, many of these virtues that... Peter lists are virtues that were celebrated in the wider classical culture, but Christians, we participate in them, not as some, uh, some pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps, but because they've been granted to us in the divine nature. And so that this is what it looks like. A life of faith supplements these. And so this term temperance or self-control in in the in their culture referred to primarily the restraint of one's emotions and desires um it's contrasted right it comes this is the the term is contrasted with desire and feasting and of course sexual indulgence um so this was a greek virtue but we actually see it highly praised and you'll not be surprised by this in hellenized Gr- jewish culture so there's this great quote by josephus which i love uh describing uh how um how how highly we should prize this virtue he says we ought to esteem those who do what is agreeable to temperance and prudence no less glorious than those that have gained a great reputation in their actions in war Hmm. right so he is saying like This is, yeah, this is the stuff of war heroes, right? This is how great an accomplish it is to to have self-control. The trait in particular sets the Christian apart from the false teachers 
that Peter is opposing in his second epistle, right? They are described as dominated by sensuality and sinful desire, love of pleasure. They're unable to restrain themselves from pursuing their lusts. Uh, the Stoics and Christians probably had very different motivations for pursuing self-control, but they share this as an ethical concern and an ethical value. So Pastor Michael is is self-control has this fallen on hard times by the way just in case everyone's wondering yes this is the exact same term this is the fruit of the spirit from galatians 5 as well self-control has has this fruit of the spirit fallen on hard times or or how are we doing in this category today wow what a good leading question um yeah i mean i think we can all hopefully look out at the current state of the church um our of lives. our culture of our lives yep yeah, i was our i children. was going to say if we look every day when you look in the mirror uh, that <laughs> i mean self control is not a strong suit among us and that is you know temperance um this self control is not it seems to me that it's not even something that's really taught anymore right i mean mm. self indulgence is literally usually it's couched in other terms right it's you know whether it be self care or you know again treat yourself right treat yourself um, what it looks like to treat yourself like you deserve it right you deserve it right uh, you you should get what you deserve um you there's so much that is taught contrary to learning self control um think about the lack of discipline right lack of discipline of children Right. How many man, how many kids out there are just wild because their parents have just never disciplined them or they say they're going to discipline them and they don't. <laughs> I've I probably have like I have so many conversations every week with people that are like, oh, man, I don't know what to do because, my, you know, man, my, you know, right. my my kids, I want to discipline them. But then they see all their friends or they see, uh, you know, everyone around them and like they don't get disciplined at all. And uh, so like discipline in that way, right? Self-control is not taught um, to right. those below us, um, those younger than us. Um, Self-control is not something that we naturally are inclined to. Um, we we definitely have so many problems with excess. You think about um, just the, the mass use of narcotics of various kinds. You think about um, the drunkenness that is just normative all around us. Think about um, the just normalcy of binge watching. Okay. I'm coming off of a week when we were sick in my house. There's my excuse for, for my, uh, confession, which is to follow. And we watched so many, I mean, we watched just tons of movies, right? We just constantly had right. movies going because everybody is just sick laying on the couch and, and, uh, tired. And every time we get up, we feel worse. And, that is also just normal life a lot of the time, right? How how hard is it when you're just sitting there? You're like, well, we'll just watch a little bit more. Well, just one more episode. Man, we all do this. Um, I think about the way I am with so many different kinds of treats. Like if there's like cookies or brownies in my house, dude, I'm not having just one. I can't, I can't like stop myself. So yeah, self-control is is not is not going well. Let's put it that way. It's not going well for us. I think we can all agree upon that. I, I hadn't um read out loud the, the description of self-control from Second Peter uh since I wrote it, which was a while ago. And I just realized as I read it out loud, I was like, yeah, what are we more? What do we more appear like? Do we appear like the descriptions I gave to the false teachers or like a stoic, right? I was like, oh, love of pleasure, unable to restrain themselves for pursuing their lusts. Oh, like, it's just like, oh, bummer. Yeah, that that is like what, what describes us as. And so I just thought uh, one, there was a place for us to start that because I do think this is this is something to be that is going to take like a such a radical waking up to for us to start getting our minds around this and because this this idea i think is probably so 
remote from what we are. And I, and I think that for that reason, I would, it would do us some injustice if we were to like, well, here's what we think it would like what people saying, what self-control would look like. I think we're going to start with uh, two voices from uh, more than a thousand years ago in church history. We are going to read from a little bit from Gregory the Great and the Venerable Bede. By the way, Bede wrote a commentary on uh, Second Peter, which I found at least very interesting, very thought provoking when I was when I was studying this. So here is uh, Gregory on supplementing knowledge with self-control, which is what we just talked to. Those who fast, so he's just started with fasting, which I'm sure everyone everyone has as much experience with, with him as fasting, right? I'm sure that's still common. Must be very careful to make sure that in running away from the desires of the stomach, they do not give birth to vices, which are worse, almost as if their virtue were producing them. For it is easy to mortify the flesh and the stomach, but at the same time, to become very impatient in spirit. And this impatience upsets the mind of many who abstain from the desires of the world. So, again, I found this just so striking because Gregory's like, I know you're able to fast. I know you're able to abstain from all the worldly desires. But actually, that is just the tiny baby steps of self-control because that's still you're still impatient. You still have all your sinful tendencies that are probably coming out when you do these things, which all of us are able to master with relative, like relatively. And to us, we read that and I go, what are you talking about? No, I can't right. Do any of that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's brutal. That is brutal to, to think about. And you think just about the, the access that we have to everything, right? Because we live in such an affluent time we have access to all kinds of things that in the past you just maybe didn't have access to because of lack of funds, right? When, when you're just right. constrained naturally to a limited diet, when you're constrained naturally to not have the internet where you can just go on YouTube and click on a video and never stop, like you're just trapped into that, in that right. black hole of YouTube content that just wasn't a thing in the past in the same way. And so we should expect that this is going to be a particular difficulty for us, a particular sin that's going to crop up is going to be this, this lack of self-control. Yeah. Let me read just one short thing from Bede, and then we'll, we will kind of think through some applications for us. So Bede um, yeah, so this is just a little bit what he says about self-control. Self-control requires steadfastness because whoever has learned to stay away from the pleasures of this world needs the willpower to go on doing so. The person who reaches a point of self-discipline may be tr truly called godly. Hmm. So I just found it fascinating that, again, he he um rightly or wrongly and i think he's at least making a valid point that equates reaching self-discipline as as the mark as a mark just dis, mark descriptor of godliness which yeah. again you know again maybe in his monastic age there were there's a lot of baggage that went along with that we're just so far from that i'm not afraid of anyone in general, fall if he's falling into the ditch, I'm just not worried about you falling into that ditch. Yeah, seriously, the concern that we would become too stoic or right. be too harsh on ourselves or on others, and we're not worried enough about taking care of ourselves is just so far from the problem. That right. it's hard to imagine. Like we're so far off the road the other way that even if you overcorrect, it's going to take a couple generations before you see that you've gone too far the other direction. Oh, we're back in monasteries, right? Like, yeah, it's it's not going to happen soon. I'm worried that we've so divorced the idea 
of self-control from godliness that it's barely a fruit of the spirit anymore yeah right? that's what i'm concerned about oh totally um, totally and and so and let me tell you though this thought that has been on my mind maybe it's because i i'm involved in a church plant and so and I've done some things uh, with the work I've done with businesses online. And so it's caused me to run into some of these like motivational and entrepreneurial in influencer type people and um, needing to learn some business things, watched some of that. Um, but I, it was this moment of a bit of shame that I experienced in thinking about just our discipline in regards even just to the kingdom of God. And, and so maybe we'll talk about our discipline in regards to the kingdom of God. And then any ideas we, you have pastor Michael in growing in discipline and helping our children. Cause again, this is a gift. This is a gift by God's grace. We can give our children and it's, and it is, will be such a rare gift, mm -hmm. right? No one else will give them that. Um, and no few other children, as you already mentioned, the difficulty of this, few, how few children will be given it. Um, and so if if our listeners know who Gary Vee is, again, I don't recommend you look him up. He's a pretty foul mouth dude. But he and others like him, they will talk about things like, here's what you need to do to see success. Work 80 hours a week, spend no money, save your money. Like, and the, and it's all about putting it in to things you care about reinvesting it all for the sake of this like you know bold vision or you know life you want someday right and so these many of these people are willing to spend 10 years like as they would put it like eating dirt like no rewards for the sake of whatever their goal is right and it's again it's usually it's usually uh, well, you know, it's usually a fantastic wealth, right? I think Gary Vee says, I want to own the New York Jets someday, right? Like, so they want to build a billion dollar business, right? They want to, you know, accomplish these things. And obviously, you can see this in any kind of, right? You can see this in the people who want to be self sufficient in other ways, right? But they do it, right? They do this. They build and they live like no one. And I, and I just, and I look at that and I go, how, how little are we close to as willing to do this as they are for the kingdom of God in regards to the kingdom of God? Like, are we willing to put whatever we get back out into it in this manner for the sake of the kingdom of God, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of just growth and holiness? And I, and I just go, I don't know. I don't know if we're, and, and I don't know this, this was just one of the things I found convicting as I thought about this. Hmm. Yeah. That's rough to think about how many pagans could exemplify this better than us. Oh. That should be striking, I think. I think that should yeah. be troubling because uh, obviously in this situation, like there are probably ways in which there is significant excess. Obviously, there's significant uh, disobedience and lack of discipline when it comes to following after the God who made everything. But in these way less important ways, you see true discipline and where that even that is lacking among us. Right where we are not even willing to be disciplined up to that point, um, that is where we really, I think, need to start questioning how far we have fallen. Right, and and this and this is what what really hit this home to me was, I think Gregory is on to a point that Gregory the Great, and I think this idea you you're bringing up is, I think, actually. What Paul is communicating to Timothy in his in first Timothy, because I think part of the problem with those of us in the uh, like even in the YRR, the young men's circles is like 
this love this love of theology that's like a dabbling in theology or the like we're all like oh i could go mm. into ministry like this 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 isn't a disciplined mindset right if minister if a if a ministry i like falls into my lap oh i'll take it right but that is not <laughs> i'm just thinking i'm just thinking you know i'm just gonna dabble in the marine corps i'm yes. just gonna i'm just gonna dabble a little bit in delta yes. force exactly because i think paul's one of paul's big points and i'm going to read these verses in a second is that that the self-control and self-discipline required for the ministry for the theologian for the pastor especially is greater than the self-discipline required for physical fitness for these things which again mm. is like, wow, okay. Like again, I I feel shamed by all of mm. these. Um. So he says in in First Timothy four, I believe, and this is starting in verse th- set verse six. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. It holds the promise for the present life and also for the life to come. This saying is trustworthy and deserving full acceptance. For to this end, we toil and strive because we have our hopes set on the living God, who is the savior of all people, especially those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech conduct in love in faith and in purity until i come devote yourself to the public reading of scriptures and to exhortation and teaching so again i think it is right the the big difference we would say with the marines or these you know these pagans right paul's saying yeah they do have paul is acknowledging they're ve- you can be very disciplined in body you know, in these things. And Paul is saying the problem is they have disciplined themselves in things of only of minimal or relative value, right? Whereas the the training yourself in godliness is is a blessing in this life and the one to come, right? And Pete, he's telling Timothy that you need to have a ministry that will save you and your hearers. It is hard. I mean, we can't, we cannot imagine something more important to discipline yourself in. If you are considering ministry, you are trying to minister in a way to save yourself and your hearers. And, and this is why he needs to set an example in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Right. And so I just think it's, it's just, again, it's just amazing to think about all these levels of discipline of bodily discipline that we find difficult and peter and paul is saying well and the and the kind of discipline i'm talking about goes beyond that and is more valuable than that so pastor michael what do we do what 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 can i do what can i do for me and my kids and and in our day yeah that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I've started to think through some things and write down some things as we've been talking about this. Uh, and it it's hard, but uh, number one, and I mean this with all sincerity, just pray, mm. uh, like ask God to help you, right? This is all something that uh, you are you are adding self-control to faith, right? And so uh, pray, trust God that he can, accomplish this in you and pray and ask that he would ask that he would accomplish his will in your life, that he would empower you by his spirit to mortify your sin, that he would continue to wash you in his word and sanctify you, that you might be more like Christ, that you would be holy as he is holy. So this is a great, let me just say, that's a great point when we face something this that feels so remote 
what a what good news that it's a call the fruit of the spirit that we can yes. come and ask for the spirit and we can rely on God to yeah it's all of grace so so pray and ask him and in prayer be disciplined right so pray regularly um you know make it a point to pray set aside time to pray and here's one of the wonderful things about how God has made the world um number one is that the way the world is the way God has made it the way it actually works is by discipline and self-control meaning that if you live a life of excess and without limit without without any kind of discipline or self-control or temperance that doesn't last long right that is that is the life of a parasite and parasites do not have much of a life cycle mm. right a, a parasite is something that comes and goes um whereas the the slow steady careful growth of a christian is and of you know of man um as he is found in christ and redeemed in christ is to be that long steady slow obedience in the same direction so um you know you can be encouraged that uh, because this is the way that god has made the world discipline begets discipline right mm. self control begets self control and that means that there is no area that is so small that it's not of value to begin to conquer maybe it is a certain way that you speak maybe it is some small physical item um this is something that uh many years ago uh now i it would have been i would say it was in 2009 it would have been in 2009 i believe i had uh, just come off of a a kind of discipleship program and that that's just how i can trace it in my mind as to chronologically when this happened in my life but i went to mcdonald's and i ate mcdonald's and i ate it and i thought to myself this really isn't that good i mean it really isn't that cheap and i know for a fact that this is really bad for me you know what i'm gonna try to just not eat mcdonald's and i'm just gonna see how long i can go and so i still haven't eaten mcdonald's since 2009 that's not like a big thing like way to go me because i it's not as though i don't eat other fast food i do like i eat too much other fast food right um but but all this is to you know to point out hey there are little things like that right little things uh whether it be you know some kind of food you want to cut out you know maybe you want to start biting stop biting your nails maybe whatever it might be right there are little things that you can do that matter, right? Nothing is so small that it doesn't matter as far as moving in the direction of being self-controlled. Uh, and so mm -hmm. you can, that means you can start right now. This is this is why I'm saying this because um, I think sometimes it's really daunting for us to look at our lives and say, oh man, I, I mean, I've, I've literally spent my entire life getting to this point, whether it be physically, um, whether it be, uh, you know, mentally, emotionally, but especially spiritually, um, and to to retrain ourselves in godly habits of body and soul is daunting. But mm. there are plenty of things right now that you can start doing. Just right now, just decide, okay, there's a couple of these things I'm going to begin to work on. And um, as you do that, as you pursue that, uh, it's going to bear fruit in other areas as well. And that's, you know, uh, another thing to remember, I guess, in line with this is that, yes, it's true that, you know, physical training is not as important as training of soul, right? Spiritual training, right? Uh, becoming more Christ-like. But body and soul are connected, right? You, you are not a body with a soul. You are not a soul with a body. You are a whole being, body and soul. And so that means that uh, the physical and the spiritual are not so disconnected that one does not help translate into the other. 
right? right. That that physical uh, physical discipline will inevitably, I think, by by the grace of God, right? This is we're talking to you as a Christian, right? We're not saying if you're outside right. of Christ, we'll just work work out a little bit more and and that will get you closer. Um, right. But to like actually be disciplined in body is going to help you be more disciplined spiritually. Um, and I'm saying disciplined specifically because you can be like really physically fit, but you're not disciplined, right? You are, you are captive to a particular idol of being physically right. fit or something like that, right. right? So there's a way that it's not quite disciplined. You're just indulging a different part of your, your desires. Um, but what what I'm saying is a, as you are living in a way aligned with Christ, what you do in the body does translate into yes. uh, true, you know, uh, the true spiritual good and vice versa. Yeah. Right. I, that to spiritual discipline is not so disconnected from the physical that it will never, never boil over, that it will never touch. Right. No, right. these things are connected. And so those are just some little things to keep in mind that I think help uh, maybe frame how to begin to move towards self-control uh, a little bit better. I, I totally think so. I think that there is obviously a connection between um, what we'll call physical and outward things, even though they are not ultimate, um, in that Paul directly connects them. He says, bodily training is of some value right so he's saying yeah there's some value to it um gregory and obviously throughout the scriptures why would christians be commanded to fast then if that if this physical outward things were not connected to the spiritual life clearly they are and again it's not a one for one right we can't but there is value and so i do think yeah, thinking about things like, you know, the, obviously the Jordan Peterson, make your bed, you know, the the little things or of the, uh, there, you know, there are all kinds of things, right, that we can do, right? There's, we can think about spiritual things like, what would it look like for you to be more disciplined in your connection to the church like what would what what would you do to take further steps in that direction right obviously like dude if if you're not making it to church obviously we know where to start right like it, you know it just becomes yep. make that a immovable part of your life go to church yep go to church and maybe a next step would be you know go to church participate fully in the worship yep. maybe next step would be Hey, I'm going to set aside the whole of this day, right. one day a week, right? It's very doable. Now, I, I know some people have jobs that make it very difficult to do this. And and uh, I know that that's hard to work around. And so I'm not saying this has to happen overnight. But if you're, a if you're able to, especially just right now, like you already have Sundays off from work. Okay, well, set it aside as I'm not going to do anything except those higher things of worship right. of fellowship with others of acts of mercy and only those works of necessity that i have to um that i might you know actually live but i'm going to spend this time seeking after god it's a very doable thing right it's a very right. it's a very doable thing for most of us and that right there if you're able to set aside a whole day where you're going to focus on these things that gives you some of that margin that you know maybe Instead of thinking so often as we do about, you know, I'm going to make sure that every morning I'm getting up at five so that I can read my Bible for this long and I can pray for this long. Why don't you start with just one day, right? One day right. and I go to church already and then I'm going to spend extra time in prayer. I'm going to spend extra time reading or studying um, something of the the word or works of God. I'm going to speak and talk about these things with my family and maybe with friends. I'm going to, you know, see if there's any act of mercy that I might do. If there's somebody I could visit, uh, that it would, you know, be a benefit to them. But you've already got a day. If you've already got a day set aside for church, why not just, you know, use that as your primary time? I think that might be easier for a lot of people. I, I think this is this is definitely the appropriate way. Because I was thinking about like, well, how do we talk about like, yeah, and re try and find a, a a pattern by which you can read the scriptures to your children. Right. Or 
what would it look like for you to practice hospitality just a little bit more? And I think that this is maybe, yeah, this is this is the biblical call it a delight and try and set aside a day where I'm not saying, ah, oh, try and make sure you read the Bible to your kids every day because I get that work, life, and these things. But what if there was a day you always did that? Mm-hmm. And there was always a day you were welcoming people in hospitality or visiting, right? You know, various things like this. And and you had the ability to spend extra time in fellowship. Now, why is this coming in the context of self-control? Because we're not saying it's easy. We're not saying it's yeah. easy on your family to make all of this happen. We're saying you'll you will you will blow it and you will do different things to help your family enjoy it and like that and it will all be difficult and hard and messy and that is because it is something we're growing in it's something we're yep. still supplementing to ourselves that's and that's right. not a bad thing right no if you if we're talking about physical training you don't go and say i'm going to bench you know i'm going to bench 250 the first time i get to the gym you say, I'm going to learn the technique, the proper technique first. I'm going to figure out what I can do 10 reps of, right? You figure that out before you, you know, you, I don't know what they call it. Like, right. You, uh, I, I don't, I just don't know enough about that kind of stuff to know what you like. You're not at that point of your training. Like, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no not, training I, or though. Training that, set or whatever it is. Yeah. The very idea of training that is so important that it by very nature it is something that takes time that you have to take steps toward. You can't just jump right in. If you are obese, you can't run a marathon tomorrow, right? But you could go on a walk, right? You could start with that. And maybe it's just a short walk. Maybe it's just literally like, Hey, I'm just going to walk around my house or walk around the block. And that's all I can do. Awesome. Like that's like, that is a, a start, a beginning place. And then training is that, slowly adding to that, slowly growing in what you can handle. And uh, we should think of the spiritual life in that same way. Temperance, not treat yourself. Pastor Michael, are you going to go do a couple of push-ups and uh, uh, do a prayer after after this episode? I really should. I will be praying because uh, this hit me hard, actually. But I'm also going to go to bed. <laughs> so that's right. Which is is a is a good discipline to have. And so we hope uh, um, we hope this episode was helpful to you. I'm not sure if it ends up being shorter or longer. Uh, I think we both, as we talked about this, just realized how little deep experience we had to speak from as we talked about it and 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 actually how great it but how great a subject it was so um yeah this this episode just for both of us i think i i can speak for came from a really real place of a really uh yeah interested interested in what growing in this will look like for us our families and we hope for you so let us know if you have great insight or thoughts on this um hit us up we'd love to talk